Hello everyone and welcome to what I suppose I should technically call Lawrence Doesn't Play because unfortunately due to um, things happening in real life I wasn't in the last uh, Minecraft stream so I'm going to be talking about what other people have done instead of what I've been doing. So let's start off with something nice and simple over here. Tristan has created yet another cobblestone generator. I think this is at least the third one we've had. Maybe maybe, maybe more than that. Maybe at least the fourth. Um, and this consists of some lava and some water, as is always the case in, in uh, Minecraft, that are mixing together to make the uh, the cobblestone you can see up there. That I, Well, it says clear glass, but that's because it's looking at the thing, the uh, the glass in front of it. And then there's a transfer node, which is picking up, invisibly picking up that uh, cobblestone and putting it into this system here. So you can see the, the number there ticking up. That's cobblestone. Then this is a compression, a compacting drawer, and that's turning the compressed, compressed cobble, sorry, it's turning the cobblestone into compressed cobblestone every time there's, um, I want to say nine of it, I think it's nine, so, um, it, this is getting a little bit ahead of itself, but it's, it's creating the cobblestone, the compressed cobblestone over here and using up, using up nine of these each time it does. Then that's being also turned into double compressed cobblestone, although that's taking a little bit longer um, because you need because it's that for that one you need nine of these, which obviously means 81 of these. So it's a it's a slow process. And then in case that wasn't bad enough, the double compressed cobblestone is getting put down into here. So we've got 42 of them. That's being turned into triple compressed cobblestone and eventually quadruple compressed is going down to here, which is getting turned into quintuple compressed, which and then uh, sextuple compressed, which goes in here and pushed over to there, which will get turned into presumably septuple and octuple compressed, which is a bit ridiculous. Um, so every single one of... When, when we actually, if we actually manage to make any of these at all, each one of those will require will require um, nine to the power nine cobblestones to be made up here, which is an obscenely large number, and that's why there aren't any of them yet. So yeah, that's all a little bit silly, but it's making all these things just in case we ever decide we need them. This computing system grows a little bit each time I look at it, and I'm fairly sure I don't 100% understand it, although I do feel like these entire things are being held on these cables, which is extremely precarious, and I feel like we should have some additional supports in at the back. Um, but on the front we have crafting monitors, which I believe allow us to see what those particular machines are up to. Then we have the um, crafting storage, and the more crafting storage you have, the, um, the more complicated a recipe can be. So if I look in here and say I want to make something like... Um, I don't know what I might want to make. I might want to make a copper tank. Oh no, we've got three of them. We might want to make a copper gear. Okay, let's have a look at that. Um, that requires two things. That requires these ingots and then we need to make the gears. Now, th so that's not going to take up very much RAM. As you can see, it only uses 30 bytes. But if you had a recipe that was more complicated, like, like a logic processor, this has a bit more in it, uh, so we've used 171 bytes, and there are some recipes that have many, many layers. So, for example, you might find that in order to create the logic processor, you need to create the gold plates, and that requires something else. And that, and so these these things can quickly get a little bit out of control, and that's why there's a scroll bar at the side of it, and it can it can get bigger and bigger and bigger. So, yeah, there's lots of different options in there that can potentially be processed, uh, can potentially be crafted, and some of them are quite complicated. And that is why we've got all this storage space available for all of these machines. And we've also got, oh, and these have got 4K crafting storage on this particular machine for even more ridiculous recipes. So, this, so obviously these 1K, I was going to say, so this, having 2K for each one is probably going to be fine. But apparently it's not. That's why we've got these 4Ks on the back for some very, very complicated recipes. But I have to admit, I'm not as familiar with the uh, computer system as I would like to be because I've been working on other stuff. I've got a bit of an understanding about it from Al's videos, which I would recommend watching if you want to see his um, more accurate, well, more detailed descriptions rather than me wandering around and trying to puzzle it out as I go along. And he's been doing some fairly clever stuff. What's going on in here? So this is, oh, this is a compactor. Um, right, so this is something I believe... That has been, yes, this is something that's been being talked about quite a lot by Al recently, um, and it's because we need it for the for a lot of the things we make, like the um, like the logic processor I was talking about. You need various different types of plates, and plates are made by taking alloy. Can I? No, I can't click on it there. A plate is made by taking an alloy, a, a piece of ink, an ingot, and putting it through the compactor, which will turn it into a plate fine but that takes quite a long time to do so we don't want to we don't we don't want to ask for, request something and then have to wait for all of this stuff to compact in the in the compactor over here so what Al has done here and I believe it was mostly Al if not entirely him um, he set up an interface here and this is told these these things across the top are um, requests and the things a request and so these aren't real items but these are real items and then down here are patterns that tell it how to make that so for example to make a uh, 
make a tin plate, you, you can create one tin plate with one tin ingot. So that means this interface, if, it, if, if anything require, requests a tin plate and there aren't any available, it will say, aha, I know how to do that. I'll call in a tin, a tin ingot and I will squash it into a plate and then it comes out on the other side over here. So we've got on here, we've got the standard thing where you, um, you look at the configuration. It's pulling in from the top. You see blue and blue match up and it's pushing out to the right, orange and orange. So it takes in from here, pushes out over here. <clears throat> which is great. So this, this interface is, is able to pull some stuff out of the system, to, down these data cables into here, push it into there, fine. Um, the clever bit of this is that this interface has been told to request 64 of all of these types of plates. And that means that the system will run and run and run until the 64 plates will come along and sit in it. However, we can also pull these back out again when they're required. So if I went off and, request, and asked it to build something that required a load of copper plates, for example, or, or bronze plates for example it would pull the bronze plates out of here and then the system would go hey I've not got 64 anymore and would start requesting them and that means it would then start telling this compactor down here to build them so we've always got a buffer of 64 of each of these plates available um, and I think there's going to be an extensions of this where we're going to have more of copies of this basic system but with different types of plates in it because there's a bajillion different types of plates that are required so there's going to be more of these probably I don't, I don't know where he's going to put them in but somewhere around here just to, just to allow us to have enough of everything we need and I'm being chased by a haunted hoe. Lovely. What's this around here? This is a magma crucible. Um, I think this might be, so one of the things we're trying to develop next is a system that will allow us to deal with fluids in the um, in, in the automated systems and that's quite, that's a bit more difficult. Um, I don't, I, I'm not going to say I entirely understand it. Uh, we'll, we'll find out what's going on with that in the next episode, I imagine. And then from then we can we can learn about things and how it all works. What do you, you're a controller slave. I don't care about you. So that just that just allows all the draw systems to be linked up for, for extra storage. Another thing that's been um, automated a little bit more is over here in the, um, ow, in the uh, in, in what we've been calling the car park. I talked about this last time, but because because it had accidentally um, harvested the entire building, which was a bit silly. But um, over here, if I click on this, I can show the the working area for this. This is a a plant gatherer, um, and so as you can see, this by this big purple box, it's going to automatically har or it can automatically harvest all of this cotton which has grown. Um, I think it's probably grown. It looks like it has, but I think it's all turned off at the moment because we've got more cotton than we know what to do with. So uh, we shall have to wait a cotton picking minute until we get a bit more of it. And we've got lots of that all the way down here. So we've got cotton being grown down here. It's only 75% grown, um, but there's more of these collector things. There is an, a cunning system set up here where these collectors will pipe out into these um, into these item ducts in such a way that the seeds all end up in. And I think I can, can I go down further? No, I can't go down further, but I can look up here. Um, the seeds will end up in this plant sower and that means that when these get harvested or when the ones above get harvested technically it will automatically then replant them all so the seeds go out that, that, that way and I think there's I was going to say there's probably a filter on here there isn't a filter there yes there is a filter on there that's that blue thing I'm looking at this, this one's power this one's items if we look on here there is a filter that only allows cotton seeds to go back into here so it can plant more cotton up the top um, everything else will continue down this pipe and disappear off into the storage system or down a pipe, I wouldn't like to say exactly which one it is, but down a pipe somewhere and go into the storage system to be dealt with. And from there, there are further machines. One of the recipes that's been set up is turning cotton into string. So I've come along here, I've had a string. Um, okay, there's like 4,000 of it at the moment, so I'm not gonna, I'm, I won't start messing around with that. But string can be made out of cotton. So there is, a, there is now an automated recipe that will create string until we've got 4,000 of it. And then from the string, we can then make wool blocks until we've got a thousand and twenty-four of them. So you know these are nice, um, nice round numbers because um, binary. Um, I have to admit I'm not sure where that's being done. Um, I think Al did talk about it and pointed it out in, in in his last videos though. So there's a bit of information in it there. Mike has been busy with quests, so he's now finished. Mike is now our um, official chef because apparently he's gone through and he's actually finished the um, the kitchen workshop quest line. So he's made every type of food that could possibly exist and has claimed the um, has claimed the uh, master, what was it called? Uh, the master cook um, title from that, from finishing that up. So well done there. That means we're going to have lots of exciting things to eat and um, and be able to boost our foodish, uh, our hunger levels, uh, or squash our hunger levels very, very easily.
He's also a little bit, well, miffed is probably slightly too strong a word, but last last this week, my uh, my job was to be making Terra Steel. Now, I didn't do that because I wasn't there. So um, he's been getting antsy about needing Terra Steel. So he's been going around decorating. I assume this is probably him. So we've got, we've got now Christmas trees on the entrance to here. I noticed some extra bushes on the, um, some extra hedge, hedge areas on the steps going up into the tower over there. And he says he's uh, replaced all of the bushes that were demolished by the... Um, by the grow tower fiasco last a, couple, a week or two ago. So, well, yes, all this is uh, we have we have um, hedgerows around here again. Now, Tristan has said that he's supply he's automated the um, the supply of super glue to the um, to the carpenters. Uh, not not he hasn't automated creating it, but he's automated it being supplied to the carpenters. And I believe the carpenters yes, they're down here. So this might be something I can come along and have a have a look at and see if I can see if I can work out what he's done. I probably won't be able to, but I can have a look nonetheless. Okay, so we've got a fluid duct along the back here, and. Ah, oh, I see. So when he says he's automated it, he means he's whacked in a tank of it and piped it along to all the carpenters that need it. Okay, um, <laughs> that's slightly less automated than I was expecting. Unless there's some way that it's being taken out of... I can't tell. There's, um, it's too crowded around here for me to tell what's going on. Ah, oh, no. Okay, no, it's, it's slightly more automated than I was, than I was suggesting. I've um, Yeah, so down there, there is a cable... <laughs> Going to a, I can't even see what that is, a, a fluid export bus from the system. So, okay, so there is a, there is a supply of superglue inside the computer system. Now, I'm, I'm not even going to think about how that works. I mean, it's bad enough that we can keep items inside the computer system. The fact that we can keep liquids inside there as well is even more bemusing. But that means there is a supply of superglue in there. It's being pulled out by that, which is keeping this uh, stone tank over here full. And then that's piping it out to the carpenters. So that, that seems quite neat. That means these carpenters will always have a full supply of superglue. And they can all, then they'll always be able to make whatever it is they are supposed to be making. So if I demand some basic control circuits, we'll find that these items will automatically be dropped in here. It's already full of superglue. It'll make those basic control circuits and pass them back out to be made into whatever it is I'm wanting to make them into. So, well done there. Um... Let's have a look over here. So we can. So presumably that means I can look in here for super. Okay, there is. We can make glue compound. I don't see. I, d I don't see any super glue in here now. Maybe that's just because I can't take it out by hand, so it doesn't show up in the terminal. I'm honestly not sure. <laughs> Maybe somebody will. I'm sure that'll be answered in the comments though. Finally, and I, I think this is probably a finally. Oop, it's raining. <laughs> but other than, other than the fact it's raining. Oops, that's uh, not how you use a, a thing. Uh, slime sling. Right, Peter's made some big changes to the um, to the mystical agriculture area. So normally, you, you'll probably remember from previous times I've come over here, all of these have always been just sort of fully grown, whereas now they are actually growing. And that's because Peter's put in some automation up there. So that's presumably another plant gatherer or similar over there. I don't want to walk on the um, I don't want to walk on the field because I'll probably damage something. So let's let's come around the side here and see that this is oh, this is a plant interactor. So. I, Goodness knows exactly how it works. It's got a, it's got a range add-on that means it's able to cover the entire, um, yeah, the entire field, and and all actually the entire area is going quite high up as well. Okay, fair enough. I, I imagine that probably doesn't matter. So we'll turn that back off again. Right. So what this will presumably be doing is planting and harvesting all of these um, glowstones, glowstone, electric. Oh, there's lots of different types of seeds down here. I, hmm, maybe the plant interactor allows you to put whatever plants you, you like down and then it will just harvest them rather than ripping them out. I, I'm not really sure. But apparently he's then automated the construction of the various different types of essences. Although maybe he hasn't because there, don't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be very much. I mean, these numbers aren't quite what I'd expect them to be. There's lots and lots of this, lots of this, or none of these two. So I'm guessing maybe he hasn't actually done all of that. Let's have a look underground, see if there's any clues. Now that just looks like it. This appears to just be a um, a pipe leading out to the to the, the plant the plant botherer over there. Down here, there is just a hole to stand in, and this is just a connection to the um, to the network. So I don't know what he's done. We'll have to uh, we'll have to interrogate him th thoroughly in the next um, in the next session to find out what he's been up to. And I should probably fill in the holes I've dug as well. To be honest, I should probably hoe them as well. Um, can I do that with this? No, it's an it's an all in one all in Oh no, I can do it. There we go. <clears throat> Pressing the wrong mouse button, as usual in this game. Right, so I think yes, we're going to need to Oh I rem yes, I think I, I think Al talked about this in his video actually. Um 
the, the reason it's not quite automated, it's, so it's semi-automated. We've got all the stuff being brought up to here automatically, but then you need to go in here, and because you need to use an infusion crystal in order to make the um, in order to make the, the the next levels of the the essence up, you you need to do it semi-manually. So you can come along to here and you can pull in a stack of each of the different things, and it will it will then just happen. But you can't, but it can't be automated just yet. We'll see how that goes in the future, though. So, well done there. I'm going to stay in here because it's raining. I can hear the plants being uh, harvested behind me. That's quite um, disconcerting. <laughs> okay, so thank you for watching. I apologise for the slightly disjointed and possibly confused video. Uh, it's basically because I wasn't around this week, so I don't have anything to report on that I've personally done. So I've been just guessing a little bit based on what other people have done, um, based on the notes they've left and the videos that Al has made. So there's some stuff... Oh, no, that's just stone down there. Never mind. So, yeah, if you want to find out a bit more in a bit more detail, you can either watch Al's videos or you can come along to the stream on Monday. Um, I will be back and... That cow's going a bit berserk over there. Uh, I'll be back on Monday as normal. Uh, we'll have to have the stream then and hopefully I'll get the, um, the what is it, Terra Steel up and running that um, Mike has been uh, pining for for the last couple of weeks. And uh, we'll, see what, what he, we'll see what he can do with that. I'm slightly worried that he's going to make a nuclear reactor, but I guess we'll, hopefully he'll, um, he'll, he'll make it not too dangerous. And then there's the other stuff on the channel as well. I'm doing various Factorio tutorials on Fridays. I'm doing a Factorio stream on Wednesdays. And there's the various uh, videos, the catch-up videos coming out at the weekend to give you a bit, bit of an idea of what, what's been going on. And assuming we have time to produce them all, there'll be GTA videos every Thursday. So, thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next stream. And uh, catch you then. Bye-bye.